Senator Tillis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Wright, thank you for being here for your years of service and for the great work that so many of the people in the FBI do every single day. Um, before I ask you a question, though, I think it's very important. I was the last member to leave the Senate chamber, and I observed the Capitol Police doing an extraordinary job in shepherding every single member and every single staff to safety. So I hope as they're reviewing some of the, the officers, we should go through a review. I hope that we're tracking their entire pattern of movement that day. I think you'll see many of them were doing, uh, uh, putting themselves between us and uh, violence, and we need to make sure that we treat them fairly. Uh, but back on the rioters on January the 6th, can you give me a, a rough idea just of the uh, crimes that many of them are being charged with or being pursued uh, through investigations? Uh, well, we're using a variety of, of statutory weapons. There are certainly assault charges. Uh, there are a number of charges that are specific. You know, by that, I mean assault against uh, you know, federal law enforcement, uh, including the Capitol Police, uh, uh, the brave men and women of the Capitol Police that I think you rightly uh, credited there. Um, there's also various charges related to destruction of federal property, uh, things along those lines. We are now starting to begin to see, uh, as we've sort of taken care of the most immediate, easiest to prove, uh, I hate to use a word like low-hanging fruit charges, yep. but now we're starting to get more of the more uh, advanced charges, if you will. So, you know, we've had some conspiracy charges recently. Uh, some of the people that are more uh, involved with different forms of planning or coordination or preparation, um, and some of those charges are starting to happen, and I would expect to see that continue. Um, and uh, incidentally, Mr. Chair, I want to associate myself with uh, Senator Graham's comments earlier. I think your threats are going up, and uh, we've got to match that with additional resources. So I look forward to the committee continuing that. Uh, would you see any uh, difference between the charges, the investigations that you're pursuing in the events on January 6th and uh, charges that should be pursued against uh, federal buildings and federal law enforcement officers being uh, harmed in Seattle or Portland? Are there active investigations for either of those two events, and would they be treated any differently? Uh, as I, I think said in response to an earlier question, uh, we are equal opportunity. Uh, so by that I mean uh, we don't care what ideology motivates you. If you're engaged in violence that violates federal law, we're coming for you. Uh, and that's just true for the events over the summer uh, and some of the domestic terrorism that occurred there. Are there active the investigations sixth. related yes. to those events? Yes. Thank you. You know, I feel like uh, you, you mentioned in response to one of the member's questions about this just increasing, the volume's increasing. Um, I introduced in the last Congress, I intend to reintroduce a bill called Protect and Serve, which increases penalties for rioters for assaults on federal officers. Uh, and uh, more significant consequences. Do you think that those would be helpful tools for law enforcement? Uh, certainly. And for prosecution. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean Go to Go ahead. Uh, I think, uh, while I'm not familiar with the specific bill, uh, I want to enthusiastically uh, support the idea of looking at everything we can do to protect the men and women of law enforcement. The threats, the violence against law enforcement in this country uh, is one of the most tragic uh, and sometimes least talked about challenges we face. Um, this year alone, this year alone, uh, an officer is shot and killed in the line of duty at a rate of more than one a week. Mm -hmm. um, and when you think about what it takes for someone to be willing to sacrifice his or her life for a total stranger, and how unusual that is, just to begin with, and then you add on top of that somebody who's willing to do that get up and do that every single day, day after day after day, and they never know when that day might be the day that they don't come home to their families. Um, and so then you put that in the context of the way in which some violent opportunists or domestic terrorists hijack some of these protests, whether it's the ones over the summer or the ones on the 6th, uh, and now you've got some of these same selfless individuals um, who are uh, in many cases killed, but for everyone who's killed, there's someone who survived, thank goodness, but whose life and his family's life is forever altered. 
Uh, and I don't think we could ever and should ever take for granted those people because they protect all of us. I agree. Uh, I'm curious, uh, with all the discussion of defund the police and systemic racism and all uh, law enforcement agencies, some of the dialogue that's out there, have you seen any measurable decrease in the number of people who are trying to apply to, to come in to the FBI? I know I'm seeing it in... Uh, state troopers are telling me their applications for academies are down by over 70 percent. Um, we see people accelerating their retirements. Do we have any potential threat out there either within the FBI or for law enforcement in general of having fewer people willing to get into this profession? So certainly when it comes to state and local law enforcement, because I talk to many of the same chiefs and sheriffs you do, uh, the recruiting challenge is a real concern and it comes up uh, all the time. Uh, that's something we need to be concerned about, and all of these trends that we're talking about will have, I think we run the risk of that, just making that trend worse. Uh, at the FBI, happily, because uh, we can all use some good news from time to time, uh, last year and the year before, uh, we tripled the number of people, Americans across the country, applying to be special agents. So when I took the job, it was around 11,000 or so a year, people applying to be special agents. In 2019, it was about 36,000. And then last year, even with the pandemic, it was even higher than that. And that's the highest number of people applying to work at the FBI as special agents to put their lives on the line uh, in about a decade. So uh, we'd like to thank our work is earning people who want to come work for us, uh, and we're grateful for that, and hopefully we can do our part to try to uh, encourage more people, because we can only take so many of them, to pursue law enforcement jobs in other agencies. Well, that is good news. I just wish you all the best of luck in prosecuting every single person that you can that reached the Capitol and every single person on the grounds who assaulted or threatened a police officer, if there's anything that we can do to help. And I will follow up with the department to get your perspective as to whether or not you think the Protect and Serve Act would be helpful. I think that it will be, but I'd like your professional judgment. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Chair. Appreciate it. Thanks, Senator.